Well, is there, I don't know if there's like one clear definition of seasons, although scripture talks about um, seed time and harvest time. Scripture talks about time and chance happening to them all. You know, but we find that um, through scriptures, what we can see is different people go through different stages of their lives and different journeys. We find um, David. David was first called, anointed, and then for some reason he went into a season where he was running away from Solomon. And then we also see that he goes into a season where he... We, we see that he goes into a season where he transitions and becomes a king, right? We see Joseph in with his brothers, his father, you know, with the flock. We see him in Potiphar's house, then we see him in prison, then we see him as a prime minister. So within those stages, because those are basically stages, but within those stages of his life, he had different experiences. In Potiphar's house, he was a slave. Somehow ended up in prison where he began to actually thrive. Where he actually thrived. Potiphar's house was thriving too. But when he was in prison, he began to actually thrive. You know, so we see different stages and different seasons, as it were, of people's lives. It would it would seem like life happens in different seasons, you know, not necessarily defined by the stages, but just defined by the things we come into during that stage of our life. What I mean by that is there's there's you can be going to school and or you can get married and that's supposed to be the happiest season of your life, but that is not necessarily true. So the stage of life may be marriage, but the season for you may be a certain kind of experience or a certain kind of growth or a certain kind of journey. You know, I think, yeah, I think that's my own opinion on seasons. That's profound. It's um, the same way we have seasons in the weather, like when we have dry seasons, we have um, rainy seasons, and if you come to other countries, there are spring. And that's how human beings go to different seasons. There's some seasons in your life where everything is dead, where you're just everything is just there's some seasons where you're planting, where you're planting, where you're just trying to, it's not it, it may seem slow. But those seasons where you're just trying to plant in view for the future. And um, there's some seasons where you know, the scripture that says you shall not see rain, you shall not see wind, that your value will be filled up. And some seasons mm -hmm. where you will just everything will be adding up for you. Been, oh, they're all seasons. We just have to understand that no season should be wasted. Regardless. Like, just like the Bible says, the children of Isaac and the seasons. So when it comes to time to a season, the, one of the most important things you should do is to understand the season you are in. If not, you won't know what to do. And that's you'll be feeling bad or feeling slow or feeling some. Just understand what season you are in and align to it. Basically, the last few few weeks or few days, I changed season. I could tell. I can't remember the day, but I could I could tell. And the previous from like um from like January to I think April, yeah, it was around April that I could tell that I changed I changed seasons. Well, like they were, they were really really tough seasons for me. And in all of all of that, I I will not lie, I learned a lot of things. In fact, <laughs> when you go through tough times, you will not you will not become humble again. You now remember that you know is is God that helps a man. But most times when you're going through tough seasons, um, it's easy to feel like maybe God has left you, or you know maybe God doesn't like you anymore, or even if not even that self. Sometimes you are wondering, ah, did you do something wrong? You know maybe you made a mistake, or you did something that made you you know go into go into um tough tough periods but the truth is that 
um, life has seasons, as scripture tells us, and there are, there are always going to be seasons. As But like as Timisan was saying, the best thing to do with your seasons is to try to understand it and align with God to fulfill or finish the seasons because different seasons teach you different things. And then each season leads up to the next, like Pastor Uru always says. So what you are learning in this season is preparing you for whatever is coming in the next season. And sincerely, there were nights, not nights. I, I think there was one night that is, ah, I whipped. You know what you whipped? Say Jesus whipped in the Bible. I said, oh, well. <laughs> oh, well, sorry. <laughs> That's the reason that you know, after I went there, and I wrote, I wrote down, you know, you need to mark, and I named it, I titled it on my notes part, on my cheek notes. I say, the day I died, you know, I, I, I wrote my heart out. I say, ah, God, hello, hello, <laughs> la bas, la bas, la bas. my God, my God, why are you forsaking me? And I just told God, I said, you know, this thing now, I've got to the place where this, by flesh shall no man prevail. I've tried all my flesh, it's not working. I'm giving everything to you. If you slay me, slay me, but I, let me die in your hands, you know. <laughs> and in in those in those periods, I not every single time, but what I tried to do mostly was um instead of looking at the things that surround me, I looked above and tried to see what God will have me do in that season. So I was trying not to focus on the the pain or the trial. Let me know is the word trial, the, the pain, and focus on okay, God, what will you have me do today? So even when the pains were still around there, I was just trying to do my best to do what God would have me do each day. And, you know, I got out of that. And the, the truth is that I, I grew a lot. I, began, I, I did things that I thought I would never do. I came out of my comfort zone. I started things that I never knew I would start. And to be very honest, if I didn't go through those things, let me not lie to you. I will not have done those things. So I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not saying that God is wicked. But sometimes these seasons come into our lives. And God allows these seasons to come into our lives because what he wants to build is far, far greater. So scripture tells us that he, he, he chastises us for a far or higher weight of glory. Yeah, so that's, that's just my own personal experience. That's something just <laughs> no, I love it. Said something just that reminded me of, of something I read about God is not doing these things for... He's not doing it because he's wicked, something like that. So... Let me use a very good example. Pio has a child. We all have a new niece. So there are sometimes um <laughs> for <laughs> emphasis. <laughs> or at six months. At six months. Or so at three six weeks, your child has to go through vaccination. Vaccination, okay. It's the season for vaccination. She has to go through that season. You just know it's a season for her. So it may, it, may, it may pain you to see your child cry when the needle goes into your child. But you know that for that season of her life, she has to go to the vaccination. But that's how it sees with God most times. It's just that as the more than now, you see your child, your child has to go through. You see when the child takes the, when the needle goes into the child, she'll be crying. But you're you are going to still allow the child to go to that vaccination because you know that if she doesn't, if she's not vaccinated at that particular point, other things can affect the child. So the, that season has to happen. That thing in child life has to happen. If the child bypasses that particular stuff in one month, in four months, five months, you probably get a disease. So it's important. That's how God builds us. He knows that it's important we go through these seasons. And David, for instance, had to go through seasons in the cave that built him into the king he was. Joseph had to go through seasons in where he had to learn character how to learn how to lead how to learn how to um learn different things so so, so so sometimes when you go through these seasons i don't so that's why we said initially it's good to be aligned with god when you don't have an understanding of this thing, you, you feel like god is being wicked to you god why am i going through this what's the matter but if you can align with god and know what god is doing for this particular season what god is doing it's easy for you to just know that oh god everything like you just surrender god everything you have for me in this particular season god um let everything work Everything you have for me, everything you have planned for me, let me just align so that I go to this season very, very well. Yeah. If not, you repeat class. <laughs> but to be honest, <laughs> what you said is very true. Like, I think yesterday, when we were having a meeting, Colors of Hope, I was speaking about how God is more interested in building us 
because there's a thing that's happening in this generation. Everybody wants to just show, show, show. But what exactly is God going to show to the world if he has not built you internally? It's like a house. Like you have to build the foundation of the, of the house. If not, the house is going to crash. Like in every season of our life, God has to build us. Nobody would ever, well, I know gold is quite valuable, but when you see gold in his raw form, you don't want it. Like it's when it has been refined that it looks beautiful. Like the refining sometimes seems so hard. Like, oh my God, it seems so hard. But when you take that journey with God, when you truly take that journey with God, like in fact, you'll be saying, God, is this me? Are you serious? Am I this person? Like he wants to build us and mold us because I've had different seasons of my life. Ah, different seasons, different things happen. In fact, transitioning from one season to another because it feels like, okay, when you figure out this season, it's like, God wants to let you rest in that season you figured out. You don't okay. enter another season. Like, God, I just want yeah. to relax. And I have got this season figured out. I remember when I was navigating school, maybe 300 level. I was, I think, yeah, one general first semester. I was already like, I was already getting school figured out. Like, I was, uh uh, I was doing it well. You know, I see. I figured out how to navigate do, going to work every day. It was so different. Ha. Then I came back to school again. I to now navigate how to start reading up again, reading for final year, like different season of our life. But if you don't take that journey, like you cannot handle the next season. Like if I don't know how to read now, what if I go and do masters? Like we're saying school is hard. Oh, you know, uh, or, or you know how people say, oh, school now scam. You know, Nigeria is like this, blah, 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 blah. But if you don't learn how to read in school, if you don't learn how to wake up at night and actually focus on your life, how are you going to do it when you have a job? Like nobody, like nobody's going to tell you they used to wake up at night to, to to write a report to nobody's going to tell you that, oh, you know, if your boss says you do it like this, you do it like this. So no one's going to teach you how to be excellent. God takes you through this process so that you will learn excellence. So if you do not learn excellence in that season, when you go to another season where you need excellence, you don't have it. You don't go if a tree falls. I won't go and just raise the tree up. Or let me use something, maybe lift a cupboard. If I had not been working out for like months, not even a month, like months, to build the stamina, the muscles to be able to lift that cupboard, the day the cupboard falls, I won't be able to lift it. If we don't build ourselves in God, the day that quality needs to be used, you won't have it. Like you can't go that day and go and study your Bible and say, oh, how did this person do it? Oh, how did Joseph do it? Did he do it like this? You need to have this thing. Keep building them in you, building them in you for the day you need them. But we don't realize that we're just, in a hurry to show than when in a hurry to build. I remember I told God, I'm like, God, I don't want, like, I want you to build me. Like, I actually want to have a work with you. I don't want, like, I said, God, like, I don't want to be popular if you've not formed yourself in me. Like, I don't want any other thing unless until you, me and you are joined, we are one, like, until I look like you. Because if not, I will go out there into the world and shame you. Because the day they are stealing money, if I don't know how to hold myself, I will go and join them. They will say, ah, she's not a pastor. She no. She's, ah, too, she stole money. Do you understand? We have to build ourselves in these seasons. If not, for the next seasons, like Joseph, like um, David, for the next seasons of our lives, because we would not be able to handle it. I used to look at Candice Owens a few years ago. You know, she's very bold. I don't know if you know her. She's very bold, very outspoken. Yeah. She talks, yeah, you know, I know her. and I think one day I asked myself, like, am I ready for that level of exposure? Am I really ready for that level of scrutiny? Am I ready for that level of hate? And that's what the disciples were actually ready for. Right? Th those were things that they had to experience on their journey. So I'm ready for that ex that exposure. Sometimes we think we're ready for things, but I've learned to count the cost. But I'll get there. I've learned to count the cost, and I've realized that in learning to count the cost, I can actually tell myself, in all honesty, what God is, what I'm doing in each season, and what I shouldn't do in each season. But that's another topic for another. That's another topic that that I may dwell on. But I want to talk relating to the things, some of the things that um, Mover said. I think that we forget that the journey of God is actually the journey to the face of God. 
if we remember that a lot, it would really save us like a lot of trouble with every other thing. The journey in God is the journey to becoming Christ. It's the journey of we behold and we become. Like as in that is that's what we are doing. Right? You know, most times it feels like the journey of these days, it will seem like most people believe that, or the way it looks these days is, you know, is the journey of um shining, you know, the rise and shine and success and you know, and all that. But the journey that God is following you on is that journey of becoming like him. You understand? And in that journey of becoming like him, we live in a very broken world, right? So living in a broken world means that we'll generally have experiences, right? And the parts of us that have not been formed in Christ will be tempted. And so that's why scripture says that God doesn't tempt anyone that we are tempted of our own wow. loss, right? So as we journey in Christ, because we live in a broken world, the parts of us that are not formed in Christ are tempted. Usually that's where our trial is from. Most times that's where our trial is from. The thing that is hard is the flesh that is breaking, usually. Usually that hard thing is, Sometimes you're going through a season and saying, God, how can this be me? You are feeling him. Like, do they know me before? How can I be here? Right? Every time we actually go through trials and it hurts, like it pains our flesh. It pains us rather. It's usually our flesh that is breaking. Right? So we live in a broken world. Now, so this is how it's supposed to be. Living in a broken world and living in God. Right? We're supposed to get to a point where our response to the journeys and the trials in life no longer is the breaking of flesh because all flesh has fallen apart, right? Is the reason why Jesus was in that water with the disciples and Jesus was not disturbed, but they were, right? So I was supposed to get to a point where when, when something comes, if we're not tempted of our own loss, we're not supposed to actually respond. We're not supposed to actually be disturbed by the storm, right? Now, so what pains is the flesh breaking away and us looking more like Christ? It means that if that particular situation comes again, with by the grace of God being form be formed in a certain way, that we don't have those same responses anymore, right? So that's the journey of, so it's this explanation is what we need to keep at the back of our minds instead of the fact that God is tempting me. Oh God is showing me, baby. It's literally like as in the parts of you that are not formed in Christ, that are disturbed within the trial. If, on the contrary, you are formed in that area, you have dealt with shame as someone talks about your past or a news comes about your past on the social media. Is this a trying season? Yes. But are you falling under the trial? No. Because you've dealt with your past and you've dealt with your shame. But is the whole world talking about your shame? Yes. Can you stand regardless of the whole world talking about your shame? Yes. So we can thrive through trials. So for me, what I would say when we're going through, what was what I'll say when we're going through trying seasons, because there are different seasons that we're just talking about trying seasons right now. What I'll say when we're going through trying seasons is start to look for the parts of your flesh that are paining you. Look for the parts of your flesh that are paining you. Most times when we go through trials, we're looking for who to blame. We blame God. We blame others. Once you catch yourself doing that, you have to remind yourself that it's your season and that you have enough grace to thrive through your season. There's enough grace, there's enough favor, there's enough people, there's enough resource. He has overcome the world. He said in this world of the troubles, but he has overcome the world. Take heart, but he has overcome the world. So once we start to feel that pressure in our seasons, the response is, God, where is the water? Where is the pathway? You know, where, what are you saying? What are you doing? Right? What do I need to adjust to be able to enter into what you're doing? 
Peter needed to adjust his fear. He was afraid, so he couldn't walk on water to meet Jesus. He needed to adjust in the area of his fear. So it might be the area of your fear. It might be your shame. It might be bad mouth that you have. It might be traumatic experiences you've had that is making you respond in this situation in this way and not in the God way. Right? Okay, so that's that's my bit. I'll come again. <laughs> Let me give the floor to someone else. So, um, I think what will be on a lot of people's minds is we we have been talking about how some seasons are some seasons are um we we transition from one season to the other and it becomes a bit uncomfortable so for example um i was in nigeria a few months about well, seven months ago and i came into the uk is a totally different seasons uh, season and pastor Mofe was talking about um when she went for it and she came back to school a totally different season. I think what people might be trying to find out is, you know, how do we handle transitioning from one season to the other? Because some seasons are tougher than others. You get comfortable with, you know, the experience of God you have here. You get comfortable with where you are with God here. And it comes into, you come into another season. I don't know. How do you think someone can handle that if that happens or rather when that happens? How do we steward seasons of transition? That's basically what the question is. Who wants to go? <laughs> okay. No, wait. Tom should go before. I'll go Uncle next. T. Tom before. Oh, Pio. Who has what? made you the orator, the mediator of this session? Boobie, Yo, Boobie, oh. me. Boobie, me, I'm calling on you. What kind of problem is this? Okay, how do we how do we transition? How do we steward seasons of transition? <laughs> um the truth is, let me um, sincerely from my own experience, I think I'm still learning how to steward seasons of transition. That's that's my own truth. I think I'm still learning. Because a lot of times I have I I I earlier had felt like you know we don't savvy this matter, you know. We have gone, we've 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 been able to journey a bit, so we are a bit mature in the body in in Christ. But I get into seasons, I'm like, wow, I never expected this. <laughs> I I become shocked at my <laughs> at my disposition. I become shocked at my um, reaction towards seasons. I so ha, ha, answering the question, how do we steward it? Is eventually after everything, I realize and I come back and I realize that the only way to steward these seasons is you know come back to the God you 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 love, the God you knew. You need to come back to the presence of God and begin to even understand what this season is, because you cannot steward what you do not understand. You cannot steward what you do not comprehend you don't know what god is working in that season you don't know what you need to do you don't know how to adjust in the seasons sometimes in our prior seasons we have systems that work so you know i do this thing like this and i do it like this and you know it works really well for me but with every season it almost seems like there's more responsibility so how do you chalk in the new the new thing alongside the old are you supposed to leave what you're doing before the systems you're doing or are you supposed to update the systems it's just it's, it's very 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 diverse and there's also a tendency to feel like you have arrived you know maybe you've had some encounters some experiences with god maybe you prayed for somebody god answered the prayer or your tongue you see you, know, you see your tongue is mature <laughs> it's just... <laughs> I've got any people to say your tongue is mature, yeah, you know. So sometimes it seems to feel like, you know, we we are among those who through faith and patience have acquired the mark. And then you go into a new season like, wow, we God is still helping us. So my one is just, you know, if you if you are getting into a new season, before you even get into a new season, don't move on presumptions and assumptions. Go, go back to so I say, God, what is this season about? What am I supposed to learn? What am I supposed to do? You need to fall back to the presence of God continuously. You need to begin to live by the Spirit. Live from where God is. If not, the season will, it will shock you. So that's my, <laughs> own, that's my own take. I think 
what we are going to say is going to be a cancel the pot. So let me back to say that. But what I'm just going to say is personally, navigating seasons, right? If you want to go into another season, I think one thing I always first is sometimes you kind of don't really know what, like how you said you have asked God and saying, you know, God, what is this season about? What am I supposed to do in this season? That's the first thing. Because if you don't know what this season is about, I don't even know if you can navigate it. Then when you understand what God is trying to do with you in the season, I think what I would say is what I do in every season of my life is that I do things in my life. Because sometimes new things come and it becomes overwhelming. Like, let me give an example. This exam period now, I just read the exam code. It was so overwhelming. But at every time something was pressing on me, I would tell, I would sit down and I would tell God, I will say, God, Abraham, and I always see that analogy with God. And I would sit down and I will say, God, Abraham and Sarah, you promised them a child. They tried to use their effort to get Ishmael, and that ruined the entire thing. Who, what, at who conceived that child was actually who put the child in several room? She, it was not because they had sex, nothing. It's because that child in her way. God, you sent me to this school. If you don't help me, I'm finished. So God, you have to help me. I don't know how to explain it, but this is how I talk to God all the time. I have honest conversations God. I'm like, God, see you. I can't do this on my own. Oh, no, it's hard. But God, I know that if you can turn water into wine, there is no way I can feel this. Because in fact, God, you don't have to fail. Like, I tell God everything, everything I know in TikTok. I start to speak out. See, all things go get up, those are love zone and all that stuff. God, I'm in this category. Oh, ha. So, everything was going to get up. I'm you know, hey, hey. I talk to God, oh. I'm very serious because I have to do God at every point. I'm going to choose my life. That's what you're saying. I'm going to choose to excel. I'm living my life for God. Tell me, why are you going to school? It's not like I won't like to the school. Oh, school is hard. It's not like I won't like to But I think God, I'm going to school. So, that so, that, that. so that when they see my result, they will know that it's you that gave me the result. Not by my power. I think God, I will work hard though. I'm working hard as the problem. But God, there's something called grace. Grace is abundant. So what is going to give me my result? Not that I work hard. When I say this thing, people think it's very controversial. But I keep saying it. This is what I tell God. I say, God, how Paul said I labor more than labor. God, if you see high school, you will not be. If you see high school, you will not believe me. But I say, God, it's not that I worked hard, though. It's your grace that will give me results. It's not what I wrote in my exam. It's not how hard I worked. It's not me. It's your grace. Because God, now you sent me here. You have to help me. Like, ah, see, I said, like, you think God help me to feel very valid. Like any small thing that happens to me, I just stand it. Or maybe lie down. I say, God, I beg, you don't come again. I beg, please, help me, help me. Because I can't give up. <laughs> like, you know how people, like, maybe it's midway and giving up. I can't give up. Oh. Hmm. What God wants to use my life to do? Eyes have not seen. And not because of me, but because I've submitted my life to him. So at every point in my life, I'm not saying it's not hard. I say I don't have to give up. I will sit down. I, the other day, I say, God, I beg, following you is hard. But you see, God, there's something called grace. Like every time something becomes hard for me, I'm like, God, sometimes you say you seem complicated. But God, I'm not going to use my effort. I think that's one thing that people fail to understand. Effort. I say, God, please, I've seen how what effort gets me. And I am strengthless. I have to know. Ah, this is why God says, when you are weak, then you are strong. My strength is made perfect for weaknesses. Because effort always stifles the grace of God. You want to make the grace of God your own. Like, effort stifles what God can do in your life. Because if they ask you, okay, how did you get this? And I say, you know, I did like that. Like, hey. Sarah could not say, I did like that. Like, she was bright for how many years? Mm. The only possible reason that she had a child was because God did So I cannot tell you, oh, the reason why God did this. And I think God shocked me. Because I, I cannot explain the reason why this happened because I did something. No. Because I said stuff. So when we're doing IT defense, and you know, so like, oh, I scared. I said, you first to be scared for presentation, but me scared. What am I scared for? <laughs> I have the Holy Spirit. So I don't think that there are different seasons of a person's life, right? But one thing we have to understand is the advantage we have in God. Some things seem impossible. Some things seem hard. But every time it seems so, you go back to the God who sent you. And you say, God, like your mother, if she sends you to the market, she has to give you the money. In fact, 
And what God does is that if he sends you, he gives you over and abundantly much more. So if God sent me here, there is no reason why I'm weeping and gnashing my teeth saying, God, I cannot do this. I can go and cry and say, God, help me. But I cannot go and cry and say, God, I cannot do this. Because greater is he that you need that they are in the world. Like, I have the Holy Spirit. I have an advantage. I have, like, you don't know what we have as believers. We don't realize that. So when we go into the world, we live less than the call of God in our life. We live less than what God can do through us. We just live on victorious lives and we have the Holy Spirit. So why are we living our lives not victoriously? It's because we've not accessed the one who says, I will never leave you or forsake you. I will never leave you means he's never going to give you. And I'll never forsake you means that he will make sure that every resource available to him is put mm-hmm. out in your direction in every situation, in every season. So I'm saying that seasons are hard. But the reason why it's so complex sometimes is because we are relying on our own strength. Mm-hmm. If you rely on God, if you are desperate, like you are desperate, you come to God and say, God, you see, I'm desperate. I know it. I cannot do it. Help me. He says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you find. Knock and the door will be opened. But the problem is that we don't know these things. We don't know who we are in God, the, the life we're supposed to live in God. So because we don't know these things, Anytime a season happens, a situation happens, we are living, we are not living it or going through it victoriously. You have to know who you are in God. You have to know who, like, who you are. See, the God of the entire world is my father. Like, I have access to everything he has access to. Like, we have to understand, like, my boat is in Christ Jesus. I boat differently. I live my life differently. In every season, anytime anything happens, there was a day, I think I've told this story before, when um, there's this lecture I was stressing me. But let's not talk about lecture stressing me. Let me tell you what happened when I was to submit something to him. After he stressed me that I now convinced him to the of Jesus Christ. I was also submit something to him now, my um project work, like a project that we will have, not my not my final project, it was first semester. Ha. The man now said that he's giving us the level. By 10 p.m., the person that was my own was still in the post of the year. Because what is he said he's not going to enter school in I, I was going to school. I said, God, two things are going to happen. Because you told me by scripture that all things work that for my people, those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Either mm-hmm. this man will shift the dates or increase the time. In fact, the two things actually happened. The man not only yeah. time that day, but he yeah. now extended dates. So, what I would say is, understand yes. who you are in God and actually choose God and always rely on Him. Stop relying on your own strength. You cannot do life by your strength. You were not made to live your life in God. That's why God gave you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your advantage. Actually speak to Him like you are talking to a friend. I do it a lot. I will talk to Him. Speak to Him like you are talking to a friend. If there's anything that's happening in, your, in class, I say, okay, you are confused. Just say, ah, see, I'm confused about this thing. What do you think we're going to do about it? Those kind of honest conversations with God, it helps you navigate your seasons better. Seasons are real, though. Seasons are real. They are very real. They are hard. The way Mufa described them, they can be very real. You know, the way Mufa said he cried and then he began to write. You know, I think I entered one season and I said, Kai, this is get semen. Ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? <laughs> you know, so seasons are real. Like, I mean, I mean, seasons of trying seasons can be very tough. They can be very tough because of our flesh, like I said. Like we're we're just we're, we're mortals, and the only way to live above the world is to actually be in the spirit, like Mofe said is to actually live above your soul. Superimpose the spirit of God on your soul and live, you know, in that place of the spirit. I found myself in one, I found that one, one time I sat down and I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. I realized I was doing something. I was arranging my seasons. I was trying to arrange my seasons to a, to a good extent so that I don't, I don't make a mistake. I was trying to arrange everything to, to like, if I thought that if I take this pathway, it would lead to Wahala, I would just not take it. 
or it leads to some strife or struggle or, you know, I wouldn't take it. And the other three told me that if you do not take adventures of faith, if you don't take the risks, then you are not actually living. For instance, God can tell you to move from where you are living to another place to live. You understand? And, and you know, you, you've evaluated it. It sounds like it's generally a good idea, but where you are is a bit comfortable, right? Both of them are, are okay, but what now informs your decision is like, you know, I don't want, I don't even want, I don't want that change. <laughs> My love. <laughs> what now informs that decision is, I don't want that change. You know, I don't want that change. Um, I don't want to, I'm, I'm, I'm already used to this. When we do that, we cannot maximize the resources God has for us to thrive. We can't even move from one level to another level. Of course, there's the principle of counting the cost. Who wants to, who wants to build a house? You know, we'll count the cost. No, we'll count the cost before it sets out to build. Else it stops at the foundation and people start laughing at him. That's what scripture says. And it's a better principle. Counting the cost is very, very different from looking at it and not advancing because you are worried there'll be a trouble. Once you are worried, that's fear already and that's not in God. Being, being worried that there'll be trouble is not the right response. Instead, counting the cost. And counting the cost is going back to God, like Mofet said. When you're about to enter into, into different instructions going back to god and saying god help me make this decision um gideon asks god for confirmation how many times you know sometimes you might sound stupid if you say ah this decision i've made i want to have a child now did i have the child you're asking someone and you asked the person yesterday or the person is asking ah you see brooding on that it might seem like you are not very wise my sweetheart it might seem like you're not. <laughs> it might seem like you're not very wise in the asking, but you're staying. You're you're staying asking, so that God will give you a direction. So that by the time you are sure that this is God's pathway, you can take that adventure because God will never give you the full picture. But you can take that adventure. It's okay. It's, it's okay for us to ask God to give us confirmations for journeys so that we don't go on journeys that God is not asking us to go, go on. It's not okay for us to be worried to start any... It's not okay for us to not go on journeys because we're afraid. Right? But it's okay for us to ask God to take time and ask God, is this the person I should marry? Is this the thing I should do? So that we can avoid unnecessary strife. Right? But it's not okay for us to not advance into marriage because we're afraid that people say marriage is bad. Instead, going to God, God, what do I need to be married? What do I need to learn? Make me into a person that can be married. Give me a person that you want me to get married to. You know, we can go into God and ask for grace for the season. It's not okay for us to not advance into the season because we're afraid. We don't want strife. Ah, you know what I went through as a single person? I can't live with any other person. No. I've come to a place where this house that I know now, I'm just giving examples. I've come to a place where this house... I already know where all my posts are. My, I don't even have Wala in this house. So I'll not bring a woman and then she'll start Wala in me. You know, that's talking from fear. There's a way God will navigate it so that you find somebody that, not that you won't have challenges, but that you can grow with. So most times what happens with challenging seasons is that it makes us withdraw. It makes us withdraw. You're like, you know, I, when, I, when I finished university, ah, it was so stressful. And you now want me to go to, to like, maybe Lagos. Who wants to go to Lagos? Ah, Lagos is just stressful. I mean, I don't want stress because I've gone through one stress before. Instead, the way I feel like we should look at it is life is a constant learning curve. If what if we're, if we if what we're really doing in life is being transformed into God through our different seasons, through our different experiences in this world, God will make us. And if he has overcome already, it means that we would overcome. It means that we're already walking in that season from a place of victory. It means we are already walking in that season from a place of victory. He has overcome, so we would overcome. And we're walking from 
walking from a place of victory. We're not walking from a place of lack. Okay. So you're not worrying for from a place of lack. You're worrying from a place where you're already victorious. So yes, the, the realities of seasons are there. But if he has overcome the world, then there's opportunity to overcome the season as well. But you have to count the cost before you navigate any season. It's very important. Any man who wants to build a house has to first check what it will cost to build a house, else he stops at the foundation. But just because oh. you have to count the cost doesn't mean that you should, because it's very, it's a very thin line. Doesn't mean you should not know, go. Say, I beg, I beg, it's too hard. God say we should count the cost too. <laughs> marriage is too hard. Yes, now marriage is too hard. I've heard it's too hard. I beg, I beg, I beg. I've counted it like it's not so. It's not for me. You lose, um, you lose that at your destiny. You lose, you lose your destiny. You lose the pathway to your destiny. Trying to be careful. Yes. Trying to be careful because we've experienced we've experiences, you know, and things are still not again. So it's possible that sometimes we are not even going towards our destiny. It's possible that we're not going towards our destiny because um it's possible that we're not going towards our destiny because we're afraid of the things that happen to us before happening again. You know, we're just okay with the small one that God is doing with us. We're not even afraid of taking the world. But we don't tell ourselves that too. We just say, okay, we're not, no, I won't go on that. No, let me not take that course. It's too difficult. You get, I'm already, I already know what I'm good at. <laughs> you get, so we, 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 because of the stress of, you know, having gone through different seasons, it makes you want to withdraw, right? But instead of withdrawing, like I said, we're counting the cost. We're saying, how do I go through this? Like, okay, for instance, if I want to do a difficult course, right? What do I need to do? I feel like I need this particular course for the trajectory of my life. God is asking me to do this. What do I need to do? Do I need to start reading on time? Do I need to? So you are preparing for it. And not that the it would not be challenging, but that you made a bit of preparation for it as God will lead you. The other thing Mofe mentioned, she mentioned um she mentioned going running to the Holy Spirit. I think people may mention it as well. Just running to the Holy Spirit. There's nothing more than there's nothing more. You need God. You need God for your life. You need God for your seasons. You need God for everything. You need God. The help, the help, our help is in God. He wanted to place himself inside of us. So he went and then left us with the Holy Spirit, the counselor. He's the one that brings us to all things in Christ. He's the signet. He's the, he's the, he's the promise of God. He's the signet of God. He's the he's the he's everything, and he's and 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 God is Father. God is Father. God loves. It means that like first we can just bear. We can say God, hey, nah, this is it. Like, I need you. Show me how to navigate this. It's like the storm is there, and you're like God. I may be rattled. How do I navigate this? What part of me? What part of me is rattled, Lord? Teach me how to navigate. What part of, is it fear? You need to determine not only your season, but what you are experiencing. Like I said to you, most times it's your it's your flesh. It's your flesh that is it's pricking. It's something, something like if you are stand into God in a certain area, if you see through the eyes of God in a certain area, then you are, you are going to be able to navigate your season. Sometimes what we need is just one single shift. Sometimes mind shift. Sometimes personality shift. Sometimes one word from God. One understanding of the word. Because God always has a word for you in that season. But just the understanding of the word. Just the mind shift. Seasons are not supposed to last forever. Often when we can grasp our seasons, grasp the word of God for the season, and like Bubba said, abide in the Holy Spirit. Go to that place of the Spirit. We find that instead of the boat to continue sinking, it starts to it starts you, you start to swim. You're able to walk on water through that season. Right? So it's not that the challenge may even stop. It's that you will find bread inside. So once you are experiencing any season, once you're experiencing any season, we're asking God, God, what is the season? Like Mr. said, what is the season? You know, 
And then when you're experiencing, okay, what, what parts of me, what parts of me, what parts of me is, what parts of me is this season speaking to? Sometimes if you come into joy in that season, you will find that the, the challenge is reduced. Sometimes if you come into, maybe you are very isolated, you, are, you open yourself to more friendship, you find that you are able to even study and not have that study problem anymore. You know, sometimes when you come out of that fear of, okay, I don't want to stay alone. I want to stay with people. You know, I don't need to stay alone or something. You're able to come out of that fear of, okay, I don't want to change accommodation. You know, like there's most times the challenges we have are just something, just a shift. And we find that the whole big season literally falls, topples and falls. One thing that got me, because I, 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 I walk by this principle. And so when I had my baby, it was really overwhelming. And then I just determined joy. I determined joy. I determined joy. I determined that every part of the journey of my child would be joyful. One of the things I love to do, if you know me, I love to take pictures. So you see that I'll take her pictures. I think I'll be just, we, might have, we might have had a very bad day or she might have cried and not sleep in the night and you know all those things from newborn babies but I'll, I'll get up I'll take her pictures I'll have a good time with her I'll stay in joy with her because I want her to cultivate off my joy you know it's one thing I want so I'll stay in joy with her I always never I never put the challenge on her I know that she's just coming to this world and she's been ushered into this world and everything for her is new and she's learning a lot of things so, so I'm supposed to steward that journey, you know, and I'll do it from joy. There are days when I would get down and I would say, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. You know, I'll say, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Like, I'll feel, I'll feel, maybe she wakes up and I just dropped her off. Maybe I'll just, I, I used two hours to pet her to sleep. And then she sleeps for... She sleeps for 10 minutes and then she wakes up after I've used two hours to bed this girl. She fed her, bathed her, just made sure she was comfortable, put her to sleep and then she wakes up. Maybe I was trying to do something quickly, you know, and then, you know, emotions. And I'm like, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. You know, there's a way for us to still our soul and walk by the spirit in every season. It is by yielding to the Holy Spirit and leaning on the word of God. The word of God is what makes that your mind, your mind shifts from your mind is transformed, right? You are not looking to the world anymore to inform you. The word of God transforms your mind. And then the Holy Spirit guides you and gives you direction on the pathway. I will probably leave you people here now and go and attend to this little mama. And, you know, anyone else can just share and then we can close off. And then what we can do is we can have a se another session on this, on these times and season. And we'll ask questions. What we can do is we can just open it as, 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 as you all watch this beautiful video that we've just put. Ask us questions. Tell us the challenges. And we'll pray with you. We'll give God counsel as we can. And then... If it's something God wants us to journey with you, we we'll journey with you. Um, here we have millennials, we have Gen Z, <laughs> so we have <laughs> we have enough generations. <laughs> we have a, you know we have a large range of of age range and we have a new generation now. I don't know what they call. Oh, we will have Kela okay, like, just in case, you know. Generation we have a large, large range of generations. <laughs> We have boy, we have girl, we have married, we have unmarried, you know, so we are, we are, we are a panel of a, of variety. <laughs> so when you throw your questions, you know, we can, we can share from our, our, our experiences in God and our journeys in God. Yes. I don't think we introduced ourselves when we started. Did we? I don't think so, did we? No. So we're siblings. We're actually siblings, we're all siblings. Um, my name is Oro, and that is Mofe, and that is Bubemi, and that is Tilisa. And we've been so helped by God that God has journeyed us to a place where we all know God by the grace of God, and we all can share him. And the Lord placed this in our hearts for a very long time. 
And somehow we've managed to come and do it. <laughs> it's been a while we've been talking about just doing this. And, you know, I thank God for this session. I'm just going to bail out and then they'll talk a bit more and then end this session. And then we'll have a part two. But we'll throw questions on our on our stories and on our Instagram and just see how many people want to share questions and then we'll answer them in the next session. <laughs> God bless you. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay, I think we're talking about navigating times and seasons. I open had a thought process now it has left me. But I know she spoke about counting costs. She spoke about um <laughs> she spoke about um leaning on the Holy Spirit, the word of God. Um, leaning on the word of God. Miss and please stop sending me messages. <laughs> leaning on the word of God. And I think what I would just say is, oh yeah, what the third person was coming from the part where she said, um, like, you can just act, like just one thing can bail you out of the season. Like one thing can help you through the season, right? Like maybe one, one wisdom from God. And that actually works. Like, or, or what is it that God is trying to form in you that you've not gotten yet? Because the reason why, let me look for an example. The reason why um, something is paining you, maybe it's cause of shame, or something is paining you because you lack patience. Like there are different things that God is trying to form in us. And it, it seems trying because that thing has not yet been formed in us. So that's why she talked about us being tempted to our own loss. But I was going to say that, um, that thing about having like maybe one thing can build you out of the season. It, something happened to me the other time. My ah, uh, you know, I'm I was a student for a long time, so my experiences would be lecturers. And then a lecturer was um, will I say stressing me, my God. I say every time I come to class, this man used to pick on me. And you remember, I'm like, I what have I done to this human being that he's picking on me? What's up? He was he's my course advisor. So I had no other choice. I would see him all the time. In fact, when we write exams, it's going to be there. Like at every point, it's going to be there, right? So hmm, he was always picking on me. In fact, one day, when after he finished picking on me, I just went out of the class and I'm just like, I couldn't sometimes, I didn't even know what to say. You know, like how something like, is just like, you're just, what, what are you shame? Like, I just went out of the class and I just started crying. I'm like, I can't take this anymore. Like the man makes me feel like I'm stupid. I'm not joking to make me feel like I was stupid. And I'm like, I can't take this anymore. But then I went home. The next time he had a class, you can believe that I didn't even attend the next class he had because I was sick and tired of it, right? So after that happened, um, when we got, one other day, I now said, okay, let me go and do course of ice and register for my course because I was registering. And then when I went there to register for my course, he said um, that he won't, allow me to register for my course unless I bring our chat box. It's also the chat box, but that was not the deal submission. He was just stressing me. I said, sir, um, when he told me that, I, I left the office, right? And then I just went home because I'm like, I'm not done with my chat board. Like, you see, when I now finish the chat board, I'm not going to register for my courses. Like, I just didn't know what to do. Then I, they were not, they now told me that he's aligned course registration again because that time he took a break. They now told me he's aligned course registration again. And then they are like, oh, he's not asking for chatbot. And I said, he's not asking you guys, but he's asking me. And so let me just go. Like when I went in, I just said, you know what? I honestly said, if I perish, I perish. I did like, I, I, if I don't know if I say I prayed in the Holy Spirit until I got there. I'm like, God, oh, give me strength and bonus. I am tired. Like this man has been stressing my life. Every time we enter into an example, he makes me stand. Push me. He always distracts me. He would look for me anywhere I am. Tell me to stand up, change my seat why like i can just sit on my own and he would just come he just comes sees me tells me to stand up and i'm like like it was such a stressful situation hey god like i used to try and avoid him so that day when i went to his office like he now said um where is the chatbot i said i've not done it well like almost everybody has not done it right and then he, i don't know what he said because when I went there, I prayed, I said, God, I don't know how I want to do it, but I need to do my concentration. This entire situation with the man, I don't know, but like the team was stuck today. The animal was not just talking. I just said, ah, 
God, um, I now said, sir, he said, you know, he's not trying to do, I don't know what he said. I now said, sir, you treat me as if you hate me. Like, what did I do to you? Like, I don't even know where the boldness came from. I just said, talk it. And then he now said, you know, sit down. We now had a, me, I'm muted. Okay, no. We now had a, an honest conversation. And you know, after that conversation, he's actually not a bad person. He's actually really nice. I don't know why he was picking on me throughout. You know, after that conversation, this man, every time he sees me, he calls me his best friend. In fact, this man has helped me live different tight situations at different points. I don't even know what to say. Like, sometimes all you need for that situation is courage. All you need is boldness. Like, that's one thing that you have will be able to bail you out of, for example, a season. For me now, it was a situation with the lecturer. That one thing will be able to bail you out because no, you can't just go up to the lecturer and say, oh, like, it's like you're doing this. Old. And the man was actually quite strict. But if it's your friend, he's really nice. So when I was going there, I just said, God, if I press, I press, but I'm going, I'm tired. I can't do this anymore. Like, we have to always choose to live our lives. We have to choose life at every point. Because things will come at you, but there's always an answer in God. There's always wisdom in God. There's always something in God for you to collect in that situation. He says, if you ask me for wisdom, I'll give it to you. If it's boldness you want, like anything you want is available in the Holy Spirit. It's available to you. Just ask God and you will receive it times and seasons, the way the seed time I have it, like God creates things in sequence, God creates things in seasons. The yes. weather, the weather is in seasons, our lives are in seasons. So we've learned that it's important to know the season we're in and how do you know the season you're in? The same means, and get the same means from your relationship with the Holy Spirit, with God, asking God for, asking God to know where you're at. Like you, you wouldn't know, sometimes you know the season you're in. So it's important to do that. Another thing we learned, we gathered from today is counting the costs with God. Going through the season with God, like no matter what is happening to you, going through with God. Joseph was in the pits. He went with with God. He was in the palace. He was still with God. He didn't leave God. Like throughout his life journeys, throughout the seasons of his life, he went to God. Daniel too, throughout his reign with different kings, where they did not know him, where they knew him, he journeyed with God. David as well, throughout his journeys, he went to God. So just go through the seasons with God. Always then go through the season with God. Um, ask for wisdom, like wisdom. When, when you are going through it with God, you, God, God will tell you, like you will know what to do. Like there's a time in David's season where he had to ask God, God, should I pursue, should I overtake, should I do this? You now know what to do. Like you now know the end, and because you are not going through, you are not doing it alone. It's not like it's. It becomes easier. This the problems. The season does not go away, but it becomes easier. You are able to pass the season where you are able to know what to learn from this season. You are able to, like Pio said, Pio first said earlier, you are not going to repeat. You are not going to go through this again. If the season comes, to this kind of situation comes to you, the next time you've passed it already. You know something you are going to. So this is just it's just understanding times and seasons. I think. That will be all for today. Um, thank you so much for joining in. Yeah, thank you for joining in. Um, I think there will be a pool for questions. We we'll have this another time as as well. Yeah. God bless you so much as you listen to this. I pray that the wisdom you gain from this will be very useful to you. That with what you've been listening to today, it will bless you tremendously. The life will transform tremendously. You be helped by God. Just like you would be. I just pray again for the same end. That's something very, very important. It's very, very important. You know the season you are in. So I just pray the same end. The same end is sharpened. You know what God is doing. You know how He's doing. You know what to do. I know how to align. Bless Amen. You. Amen. You can just pray us the way. Thank you, God, for using us today. Thank you for putting words in our mouths. And thank you because, Lord, we know that as people listen to this, Lives are going to be transformed. Draw the hearts of people that need this. Thank you, Jesus, for in Jesus' name of prayer. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Have a wonderful day. If you have Bye. any questions, just put it up. We'll respond to you. Okay.